Hey friends, welcome back and thank you for joining us here today for episode 17 of A Detoured Path, where we fully, firmly believe that sometimes the only thing we all really need in life is just a little reroute. My name is Chelsea Marie Maje, and I'll be your host here today and every day on The Detoured Path. So to all our new and returning listeners out there, if you're finding yourself in need of a little reroute, are already meandering down that unforeseen pathway in life, whether by choice, force, or somewhere in between, or just interested in possibly thinking about things a little bit differently, this could be the show for you. We will be sharing personal accounts, stories, and a variety of perspectives in order to help us all gain a greater sense of community and connectivity in this little thing we call life. Just a little disclaimer before we begin. Though we do try to keep a mostly G and or PG rating here at A Detoured Path, we are discussing life, and life is not always G and or PG rated. That's just something to keep in mind in case you are listening with any little itty bitty tater tots present. Chelsea, tell me a story. She was casing the joint, looking both ways, deciding which way she thought she could play, enamored and stuck in her own muck and ching, distracted and tortured by things that didn't fit, sought a new life for herself once and all, amazed how her spirit refused to just fall, stuck in a rut, just a thing of the past, glad that the awful had stopped now at last. It was over. It was finally over. It was finally all over. Everything had subsided and there was finally a calm. This was foreign territory. Never had the waves of life seemed to be so still or still at all for that matter. The unfamiliar nature reminded her of that eerie feeling you get while watching a suspenseful psychological thriller. You know where you shouldn't be hearing silence? You know it doesn't belong there. You know it's always present before everything hits the fan. You know it's always there before something horrible happens. You know the outcome is probably going to be grim. Have you ever been outside when there is absolutely no breeze? The air is hot and humid to the point where it has physically slow down everything, and you can hear absolutely no movement, no dogs barking, no birds chirping, no leaves rustling, no cars moving, nothing, nada, complete and utter silence. And then you start to get that prickly sensation that starts running up and down your arms because you know this quiet, this irregular silence is not normal. It is so unnerving that you know it has got to be dangerous. How is that? How did stillness ever become so dangerous? When did not living in pain become such a foreign way of being? And when did living in pain become so normal? When we have identified with our pain for oh so very long, how do we go about recreating a new identity for ourselves? How do we begin a different story? When our pain has become an adjective to describe us, like we would use the words intelligent, ambitious, cunning, imaginative, creative, How do we then go about disassociating ourselves from that narrative? What if one day we suddenly became unintelligent, unambitious, uncunning, unimaginative, not creative? What would that feel like? What would that be like? It would be devastating. It would feel like a loss of some kind. If we had held on to these beliefs as I am statements, and then suddenly they no longer existed, they just evaporated into thin air, we would probably be left speechless, dumbfounded, spellbound, very much left in a state of shock, confusion. Your imagined, what do I do now kind of moment. It's the same with pain. Imagine that for the past five years, the past 10 years, the past 20, 30 40, your whole lifetime even, you had told other people, 
told yourself, said these words millions upon millions upon millions of times every single day. I am angry. I am depressed. I am hurting. I am sad. I am damaged. I am broken. I am useless. I am dumb. I am stupid. I am worthless. I am nothing. I am invisible. I am not worth it. I am callous. I am spiteful. I am wretched. I am tortured. I am abused. I am abusive. I am defiant. I am lost. I am not supposed to be here. I am a mistake. I am a joke. I am not to be trusted. I am ugly. I am disgusting. I am an unrecognizable image of who I used to be. I am not who I want to be. I am not who I am supposed to be. I am not reaching any of my goals. I am not meeting any inkling close to what I am capable of. I am not caring. I am not helpful. I am not approachable. I am not who they wanted. I am not who they wanted me to be. I am not who I want to be. I am not worthy. I am not as good as I can be. I am not as good as I used to be. I am not attractive. I am not special. I am not somebody. I am a nobody. I am not affectionate. I am not loving. I am not mindful. I am insignificant. I am empty. I am hollow. I am bare. I am looked over. I am not looked on. I am forgotten. I am mistreated. I am misused. I am shunned. I am heartbroken. I have nothing. I am 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 nothing. So, now, are we all super depressed yet? Because I know all of that sounds awfully depressing. I know I should could use a quick pick me up right about now. I'm sure all of ourselves could really use a quick pick me up right about now, since they have been listening to all of these thoughts and words for years, over and over and over, on repeat, incessantly. And they can't seem to figure out how to shut the mm up. They are all so tired of being used. These words are worn out, just like you. But if this is who we have decided we are, this is who we have always been, this has been our identity, this has been our story, how do we change that story for ourselves and then create a new one? It's possible we might first have to mourn the loss of our former self or selves. It would be oh so easy to say, oh, Oh, you just need to substitute your I am negative statement for an I am positive statement. And that you most definitely can do. In fact, you can do that until it becomes true. Kind of a fake it till you make it kind of deal. And if that works for you, well, then that is absolutely fantastic. I am happy for you. However, that might not work for everyone. Sometimes we may need to treat our pain voice our self-doubt voice, our negative self-talk voice, like a relationship that has run its course. We don't need it anymore. We don't want it anymore. And it is completely and absolutely unnecessary anymore because neither of us is no longer adding any value to the other one's life. We have grown apart and it's time for it to end. Every relationship is not necessarily meant to last for forever, even if it is a relationship we have with ourselves. When all this is true, it is time we cut ties with this relationship and just break up. Thank you so much for your time and attention thus far. We are just going to take a brief moment to recognize today's sponsor, Inker, for providing a free platform for people like myself to get their podcast off the ground. With little to no previous technical know-how, Anchor makes the whole process pretty straightforward. Go to anchor.fm, that's A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M, or download the free Anchor app today to get started.
With just a click of a button, you too can be heard on multiple platforms. Yep, sometimes we just need to break up, even if that means with ourselves. And I don't mean a break up where you spend a month apart and then all of a sudden say, I need you. I love you. I can't live without you just because you are lonely or afraid to be alone. I would rather be in a not so fabulous relationship rather than not be in one at all. The problem with any of these scenarios is when you get back together, you realize there was a clear and definitive reason why you broke up in the first place. You weren't happy. It wasn't healthy. You weren't healthy. Thriving was non-existent because you were lucky if you could simply survive. She harbors fears. This she knows. Starting over may come with blows. Her heart still full, ideas run free, not fleeing from what she can't see. You know it is wrong to stay in this bad relationship, this negative space, this negative part of you, but yet we still do do it anyway because it is familiar. We have become comfortable with this bizarre type of uncomfortability, and we are afraid of who we could be or who we might be without it. There are multitude upon multitude of a zillion reasons why we can try to rationalize, but at the end of the day, are we really happy? If the answer is no, then we can do better. We can do a whole lot better. Why live a life of barely subpar mediocrity when there is a whole fabulous, beautiful world out there to explore? It's time we go exploring. Let's go explore. And on that note, friends, I believe that is all we have time for today. Thank you so much for joining us from wherever or whenever you are doing so today. Feel free to comment, message, support, donate, and subscribe on whichever and whatever platform you are joining us from today. We are available and searchable internationally on 21 platforms, but going directly to our host platform, Anchor, is the best way to stay in the know and get connected. That's A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M slash A dash detoured D-E-T-O-U-R-E-D dash path, P-A-T-H. Leave a review and a rating if you liked what you heard, and hit subscribe to get all the latest podcast updates and information. By choosing to support and donate, your generous contributions will help to continue the workflow, volume, and frequency of a detoured path, so that we can continue to flood your airways on a more regular basis. Let's help bring back a demand for the creative artists again. And if you feel like someone you know could really benefit from listening to today's episode, please feel free to share and pass it along. In the meantime, if you're looking for more thoughts, stories, and insights while you're waiting for the next episode of A Detoured Path to come out, you can find the book Short Girl Diaries, unedited and grammatically incorrect, by Chelsea Marie Mauget. Last name is spelled capital M-A-U-G as in great, E. R as in red, which is available on Amazon in both print and Kindle formats, as well as through the Kindle Unlimited program, where you can read pages for free. We also can periodically be found as a contributor for Medium.com, and articles and spoken word can be found at chelsea-marie-mager.medium.com. Find us on Instagram by following at chelsea marie Mager, all one word, C-H-E-L-S-E-A, M-A-R-I-E-M-A-U-G-E-R. Stop by and say hi. Say the podcast sent you. And if you find yourself stimulated to write after listening to one of the topics discussed on the Detroit Path, we now have the perfect solution. We have recently launched quite a slew of journals available for purchase on Amazon. All you have to do is type Chelsea Marie Mauget into your search engine and a plethora of journal choices will pop up. We are adding more selections every day, so be on the lookout for our new additions to add to your collection. At this very moment, we have over 500 different designs, and we are adding more every day. And in the latest news, we are very happy to announce that we have been asked to be a regular speaker, mentor, and host on the new Wisdom app. Wisdom can be found in your friendly neighborhood app store. The logo is a profile of a purple person with white headphones on. Connect to be a guest on one of my live talks or catch the replays. So, until next time, my name is Chelsea Marie Marget, 
and you've been listening to A Detoured Path, where we fully, firmly believe that sometimes the only thing we all really need in life is just a little reroute.